Hey there YouTuber, so in this video I'm going to install Vtrue V5 CPU cooler on an i5-13600KF. The motherboard happens to be, gosh I don't know if we can see that, MSI Pro Z690A DDR4. Now I've got this paper towel on here to protect the motherboard from, you know, I don't know. I'm just kidding actually. That's so you guys will not look at this damaged PCIe slot, right? I paid 60 bucks for this on eBay. I know that's a distraction. I'm gonna get, you know, 10 comments about it. So I'm covering it up. All right, we need a base plate. Now, I don't know if this was the original one, but um, there are so many of these that work with this thing. LGA 1700 is what we need. So one of the two I have, You'll have, if you buy this brand new, it's going to have uh, sticky tape on it. Now, the real question, folks, is, is this CPU cooler going to be good enough for my i5-13600KF? Uh, I'm going to say no effing way. Um, now, why is that? Well... TDP of the CPU is just a little too much, right? Now, if I were to grab my uh, Vtrue V6 Pro, it probably, uh, that would be good enough, I think. Uh, you know, could we overclock on and do a lot of other stuff? Probably not. But you never know, right? You never know until you try and find out. That's why people watch these YouTube videos and why, uh, you know, I am uh, cranking, right? Uh, maybe not. So, I put the, the backing plate on. I've got to go grab the CPU. I'll be back in a second. Yeah, that box I showed you was empty. But uh, here is the i5, all right? And on the channel, we've had the i7. We still have the i9. This is, out of the 13th gen that's been released so far, the only one that... The VTrue has any kind of chance of working uh, with. Now, I don't expect to be able to probably do my benchmark videos with it, but you never know. Um, actually I actually have a pretty good relationship with VTrue. They've sent me a bunch of stuff to try out. And so I'm going to try it with this, right? One of my most popular videos. Uh, was the uh, VTrue V5 before the other channels were looking at it. Yours truly had one. All right, so um, I put the CPU in. Now, there's a triangle here, folks. Triangle here that you probably can't see. We're recording 4K 60 FPS. This is Samsung S21. Uh, pretty awesome cell phone. Uh, capable of 8K, but YouTube seems to have taken that away. So the triangle there. Now, before you drop this thing down, just make sure that the green part of the board is pretty much flush, flush with the gray frame, right? Then we'll drop that down and voila. Now even though I'm screwing around here with this paper towel, it isn't such a bad idea to have something uh, to protect the components as you're working over them, especially making videos like I am, because uh, you can damage stuff. I have damaged uh, a few motherboards in my day. All right, so that's in. Now, um, this CPU cooler has these two brackets, uh, or mounts, whatever you want to call them, and two screws, okay? Not showing you that in the video, but this is how it gets assembled. Two screws come in from this angle, and this sits on top, all right? Uh, we would show that, but obviously this isn't a new... Uh, unboxing of the V5 and in in installation. So what I need to do, folks, is put my uh, thermal paste on there. Now, I'm running a little low on my good Noctua paste, so uh, we're going to use this ID cooling thermal paste, which actually is a pretty good competitor. Uh, I like to do the three-line technique, but this stuff doesn't spread uh, as easily as the Noctua does. 
So we're going to probably have all kinds of problems getting this to come out evenly. But don't worry, not be true. I will make sure. Yeah, so we're out in that tube. So that was a total waste, folks. Absolute waste of your time and my time. Let's uh, clean that up. We're going to try all over again. Luckily, I have a bunch of these because I bought a lot of ID cooling. Oh my gosh, empty. Another one empty. Well, guess what? Noctua, it is. Um, we don't want this cheap thermal paste on here, right? Now, I do probably have some uh, Be True thermal paste, but no offense to them. I want to use better stuff on there with their cooler. So, three line technique. And I'm a little jittery right now, folks. All right, so there's all kinds of ways to drop that down. Uh, you know, little dots, whatever, one big dot. I actually kind of like this way. And when I pull the CPU off, it usually seems like it spread better. So we're going to drop that on. Good thing about this one, symmetrical, right? So... I can put it there, and I'm orienting the way I want this. I want air to flow this way through the CPU cooler out the back of the case, all right? Now, somewhere I have misplaced. Philip said. So we're going to kind of do this diagonally. Now, this CPU cooler has seen a lot of... Um, Installations. So to be honest with you folks, it is probably um, probably been my one of my most installed CPU coolers besides say a Noctua NH twelve S. Oh you guys probably saw the you may have just seen that damaged PCIe slot. Now, eBay is an amazing thing because you end up buying all these different motherboards on there. And people say, oh, yeah, we tested this. And then you find out, nope, they didn't really test anything. You'll have bad RAM slots. You'll obviously have uh, damaged pins. Um, some, you know, sometimes, obviously, you can have one or two pins damaged. Still works. Um, sometimes you can buy stuff and really just trashed um, God I've sold CPUs on there and people have absolutely wrecked those and then tried to say that uh, they were damaged it's like no sorry the picture shows it in perfect shape so I'm gonna keep doing this folks until it's tight all right so that thing's on there nice and tight now our fan so this intake side exhaust we're going to want it to look like this okay and actually this where the cables come out we want them on the bottom so it's going to look like that now you want to check before you put the fan on to see hey do i have enough room for my ram in this case we will we're going to use slots a2 to b2 because we're only going to use a pair of ram last video i made you guys might have noticed that I had um, four sticks of RAM, so. But always, uh, always a good idea when you first build these to start with one stick. Make sure that it works. Now I haven't used this in a while, and you can tell that this does not actually go on the top one. It's going to go down here. Snap that in. So my first video I did with this, we had some difficulty with that, but. Now, if there was one thing I would complain to, to be true about this cooler, uh, besides making a 140 millimeter version of it, is beef up these hooks that are on here so it digs in there a little bit deeper. Uh, I think that would make it a little easier to install. All right, so that's good. Now, this is a ARGB, and hopefully this is an ARGB motherboard. Yeah, right there. So let's uh, let's start install it four pin first. 
that's going to go right there. I had to check because this, this one actually has a... Um, so this goes in only one way, folks, right? Um, I had to check because there is another fan header over here. All right, so uh, RGB, ARGB. Missing a pin in there, right? So you got to put that. Be careful putting it in. Figure out where the missing one is, and then drop that down. Shouldn't. If it takes effort, it's not lined up or pins. Your pins bent. All right, so we've got that, folks. Um, you almost wonder on this channel how many installation videos can I make? Well, just like those videos of me installing a BIOS without. A CPU, RAM, or a GPU, I can make a lot of videos with this stuff, right? If you happen to ever see how many CPU coolers I have, you know I could just make thousands of combinations. All right, so one side shorter than the other where that groove is. And a lot of times uh, the logo is facing out. Uh, the only time that is not the case, folks, is we have shitty RAM like this. It would go in like that. Right? But in this case, it goes like that. So I made a video recently where I was trying to do some benchmarks. And, you know, I've done so many benchmarks with this high five. I was like, you know what? Does RAM really matter? Because, you know, some people think it does. I'm like, I'm really not sure. And I, did, I always thought it didn't. There's a lot of stuff RAM doesn't really matter for. And a lot of stuff it does. And found out one of my motherboards, like, boom, just turned an XMP on. Huge increase in the benchmark score. So that was going from 2133 to 3000. Well, this is 4133 in a more solid motherboard. And so the only problem here is the CPU cooler... This is great for locked CPUs, right? Like an i5-12400, but probably not going to be that awesome in uh, the case of the i5-13600KF. We'll see, though. Um, if it can, you know, hit these benchmarks without thermal throttling, uh, that would be a big, a big deal. But I'm expecting thermal throttle, so. But, hey, thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.